Hello and welcome to continue our celebration of launching Strappy 5. Thank you, by the way, for all the community support. We are going to be joined here with Alex and JS to talk about improved performance. Alex is going to give us a quick talk about why we are using Vite and JS is going to take a deep dive into Strappy's TypeScript support. Hi hey everyone, I'm Alex, I'm from Strapi, and today I'm gonna just mention why we decided to switch to Vite on Strapi V5 version. So the main point is about performance, stability, and the future of Vite, and what Vite is planning for the future, and what we might utilize later in the future. So to give you a bit of history, in V4 we were using Webpack, and we decided to introduce Vite mostly to benefit from the dev mode of Vite, which is using ESBuild, which is a tool built in Golang, which is way faster than every bundler we have uh, directly built in JavaScript. We've introduced that last year. It's been quite successful for us. We've done all the testing we wanted on stability and performance, and overall on the value it brings to the users. So we decided when we started working on V5 to make Vite the default instead of Webpack, and then deprecate Webpack. So that's why we, we made the first move. The big advantages for us, at least, about Vite are the zero config approach, where you don't have to set up tens of plugins to make it work. It's just work by default, which is great uh, for the team, great for our end users that don't necessarily have the knowledge to customize everything. And the learning curve was a bit easier in our opinion. Uh, the performance, I already mentioned that, very good performance overall, even if Webpack has been working their way to improving the performance too in the last uh, years. So it's not the biggest game changer, but in dev mode in particular, the refreshing of specific modules, uh, the out module reloading extra is very good. And then the future of Vite. So Vite is working on a new API, which is called the Environment API, uh, that will hopefully be stabilized in the Vite v6 version. Uh, and this is bringing a whole new set of uh, meta framework enablements. So when you look at Remix, for example, they already manage server side and client side uh, code all in one code base thanks to Vite v5. And now Remix is like a Vite plugin, as they put it. Um, but they can't support React server components. But soon with Vite v6, uh, this is something that will be enabled. And a lot of frameworks and full stack frameworks in particular are using Vite for those reasons, and Vite is becoming kind of a, an ecosystem uh, stone, like uh, something super important for all the frameworks uh, out there. And we know that we could benefit from some of those advantages in the future. And we really believe in the direction that Vite is taking. So that's the, the main reasons why we, we switched to Vite. Hey everyone, today we are diving into a topic that's been on a lot of minds for the past years, TypeScript. I know this is something that many of you are excited to learn more about, especially with the big changes coming in Strapi 5, so let's get started. Back in Strapi 4, we started building TypeScript support for Strapi. First, we made it possible to create application using TypeScript, and then letting Strapi handle the rest, like the compilation, then we added an experimental type system as well as typed APIs to make interacting with your data a lot easier. And finally, we introduced a new automated type generation system for both your content types and components. For Strapi 5 though, the focus was all about consolidating those features and preparing for even more improvements for future versions. First, for the type system. As Strapi TypeScript support grew, uh, we quickly realized that the current type system API needed an overhaul. And that's why in Strapi 5, we are shipping a completely revamped API with clear type names and a better namespace organization. This should make it easier to import the namespace you need and start exploring the API to use the correct types. We've also improved the inline documentation for the types. This means that each type from the type system now has a clear description as well as example of how to use it. Let's now talk about something that is very important, the code base migration. So one of the biggest thing holding us back from enhancing more and more the TypeScript support was the fact that Strap itself was written in plain JavaScript. And that's no longer an issue. With Strap 5, the code base is almost entirely written in TypeScript. That was a huge step. A lot of work, but that also means that TypeScript support, at least for user-facing API, 
will not get better and better over time very quickly. Finally, let's talk a bit about data manipulation. This one is quite important too, because as you can probably imagine, one of the key goals of having a great TypeScript support is making it easy to write custom code to interact with your data. That's why the new document service, for instance, has been designed with the TypeScript developer experience in mind from scratch. What does that mean in practice though? Well, it means that you won't need to constantly check the documentation online anymore to see which filter or which methods are available or which data type is expected. Simply put, the goal was to reduce both the learning curve and the overall complexity and let you focus on what's important, which is writing code that matters. In case you are still not convinced, uh, well, let me show you how those new TypeScript capabilities uh, look in action. And here we are in a real world Strapi application. I've just created this application using the example one provided within the Strapi CLI. It contains content types such as articles, categories, author, and so on. And I've also taken care of generating the types for those content types and for my whole application by using the yarn develop command. Let's now go back to our main uh, index.ts file and let's try to use the document service to fetch data from our database. As I've stated, we have access to articles. So let's try to uh, query all of our articles using the document API. So to do so, you will go into Strapi, do documents, and then you will have to provide a valid UID. This valid UID has to be something uh, that is related to one of the content types within Strapi. And in our case, we want to fetch the articles. If I type articles, I will be prompted with the correct name of my UID, which is API article dot article. And I can just hit enter and voila. Starting from there, I have access to a bunch of methods for my articles. I can clone, I can count, I can delete, I can do a lot of stuff. But in our case, we want to find. So we want to find many because we want to find all and this is what we are doing here. That's amazing. Let's now try to consume our data. So let's loop over our articles and try to display uh, some data. We can display the titles. We can see that we can also display, let's say the descriptions and so on and so on and so on. So we already have a strongly typed version of our entities, of our, uh, of our entries. And we can do already stuff like see that is a string, see that the description is also a string, by the way, and we can manipulate all data. But in most scenario, you don't want to just fetch all of, all of your entries. You want to apply params. You want to order your data using different filters. Uh, you want to only select publish or, or draft, sorry, version of your entries. And to do so, you can pass the different params right here to the find many function. To see what you can pass, you can just trigger the intelligence and see the list of all the possible properties that you can pass. In our case, let's start by selecting the fields. The fields allows you to only select a subset of your article, of your entries. In our case, here we have a list of all the fields that I can select in my article. Let's say that I only want to use the title. Nice. But what we can see is that here, done here, the article, the title is still valid, but the article, the description is not because we only select, we've only selected the title. So description does no longer exist on our article. We can then delete it and continue with our query. Let's say that we now want to populate some relation. We can use the populate keyword and then open an object in which we have access to the list of all the relation or populatable fields like components, media, or dynamic zones. In our case, let's say that we want to populate the category relation, say that we also want to manipulate, so populate um, the polymorphic data structures, such as dynamic zone. If we open an object here, we'll see that we have access to the on property, which represents the fragment API for polymorphic data structures. We can then continue and populate only some components for all dynamic zones. So let's say that we only want media related components to be populated. So share.media and share.slider. Perfect. On top of the populate, let's now add a sort. We want to sort all data. We want to sort it using different properties. First, we want to sort using the author name. So we can do author name and then specify the direction in which we want to uh, sort. Here we can see that we are uh, we are provided with the list of possible sort order. So let's say that we want in the ascendant order. And then let's add a second sort to say that for 
each author with the same name or for each article with an author that has the same name, we want to, pop, uh, to sort using something else. So let's select the title in Ascended Order 2. Perfect, we've just created a complex sort in just under 30 seconds. Finally, let's add filters. Filters are quite important. They allow you to uh, do quite complex stuff, but they are also quite often uh, the main reason why you had to do like a lot of back and forth with the documentation to see which filters are available, how to use which um, this filter or this filter, what data types are they expecting. Here you just have to tap uh, and see how the filters that are here. So you can use the root filters like and, not, or or, but you can also use more complex stuff like nested, uh, nested filters. We want to only get the articles which have category name. Let's use the in filter. So let's go there, in filter, and we can see that this is a string array. So in, food, and tech. Wow, just like that. And we can also say that we only want the articles where the title uh, starts start with insensitive. Um, nice. And finally, let's also add two more filters like the locale. We want to make use of the internationalization feature and only select articles in English. And also use the draft and publish features and use the status params to only get published or draft articles. In our case, we want to select only the published one. Done. Et voilà. In just under five minutes, we've created quite complex query and we are 100% sure that this is correct. This will be valid when sent to uh, the Strapi database layer. And everything took us under five minutes. Down here, we can see that when we select article dot something, we have the exact list of things that are available. We have the fields title, and we also have what we've populated, the category and the blocks. I hope this shows you um, the benefits that Strapi gets from using TypeScript and from generating types based on your application. It's honestly just the first step in the right direction to use TypeScript and inference everywhere within Strapi. Our goal is to improve the dates again and again. Well, I hope this was enough to convince you at how awesome it can be to bind TypeScript and Strapi together. We really think that this is the right direction to take in order to create an amazing developer experience. The, the, the next step in the future will basically be to integrate and leverage TypeScript capabilities a lot more, integrate it in new APIs, make use of the generated types, generate new ones, and so on. We'll get you updated on, on Discord, on GitHub. So feel free to, to follow us there in order to not miss anything. Thank you for listening to me. Have a wonderful day and see you later. And thank you, Alex and JS, for that awesome presentation. I hope you all enjoyed it. Let us know in the comments what Strapify features you're excited about. And if you want to keep the conversation going, you can always join us on Discord during our open office hours, Monday through Friday, 12.30 p.m. CST. We typically go to about 1.30 p.m. CST. Sometimes we stay longer. But if you want to stop on by and say hello, we'll see you there. With that being said, I'll see you in the next one.